Hi, I'm Mrs. D. Math. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to go over properties of rotations in 8th grade math. A transformation is a function of a figure that changes position, size, or shape. A rotation is a transformation that turns around a given point called the center of rotation. Typically, the rotation is around the origin. The movement is usually given by degrees, typically in 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and sometimes 270 degrees. You'll also be told to move either clockwise or counterclockwise. And it is important to pay attention to this because 270 degrees clockwise is the same as 90 degrees counterclockwise. So most of the time you're gonna see 90 degrees counterclockwise. But we have our four quadrants here. If your shape is in a particular quadrant, it's a lot easier to figure out where it's going to go based on your degree measurements. So let's talk really quickly about clockwise and counterclockwise. So clockwise means the direction that the hands move on a clock. So that's gonna be going this direction. Counterclockwise is the opposite. We're gonna counter that. So if I'm here in quadrant one, this is quadrant two, three, four, just a little review for you. If I'm going to be moving 90 degrees clockwise, that means I'm gonna be moving from quadrant one to quadrant four. If I'm gonna move 90 degrees counterclockwise, that means I'm gonna be going from quadrant one to quadrant two. And 180 degrees means that I'm gonna go all the way to the other side of my graph. So this one is 180 degrees. This one is 90 degrees clockwise, and this one is 90 degrees counterclockwise. Your 180 degrees doesn't have to be given clockwise or counterclockwise because it's going to end up in quadrant three no matter which direction you go. So to rotate the figure, we're gonna turn each point around the center of rotation and then connect the new vertices to form the new image. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move my entire shape 90 degrees clockwise. So that means my C here, if I started my origin, my C is five right and two up. So if I'm gonna be down in this section, I'm actually gonna go five down and two right. So it's the same distance from the origin, but I've just turned my viewpoint, instead of facing this direction when I normally count right and up, I'm gonna now face this direction and I can still count right and up, but I'm gonna end up down here in quadrant four. For my D, D is right nine, up five. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna go down nine and right five. So here's my new D. My A is right three, up nine. So I'm gonna go right three, up nine. And my B is right one up six. So I'm gonna go right one up six. Now, it may not look like it's supposed to be where it is until you connect all your points. So once all my points are connected, I can see that I've just taken my shape and I've just kind of turned it as if I have a wheel here that's moving around. This part of my shape has just turned to the new section. If I were to keep going, it would still look the same. It would look like I'm just turning around in a circle while I'm looking at the origin. We just discovered this, but a rotation around the origin will always change quadrants. Here we have a graph with some points again. I'm gonna go ahead and label these points on the graph for my pre-image. So I have D is at five, two. E is at negative five, negative three. F is at seven, negative six. And so what'll happen when I do rotate this is every single point is gonna change quadrants. The whole shape is not in a particular quadrant. Let me go ahead and connect these points. So this time I'm gonna rotate the triangle around the origin 90 degrees counterclockwise. So 90 degrees counterclockwise means I'm gonna be rotating it to the left. So all three of my points are gonna end up in three new quadrants. So D is gonna end up in quadrant two, F is gonna end up in quadrant one, and E is gonna end up in quadrant four. 
So let's go ahead and rotate these to their new position. So let's start with D. D is right five up two. So this time I'm gonna go up five, left two. So here's my new D. My E is at negative five, negative three. So I'm gonna go down five, left three. And my F is at seven, negative six. So this time I'm gonna go up seven, right six. So that should have moved everything into the next quadrant, turning to the left. So I'm gonna go ahead and label the new ordered pairs. And then we're gonna talk about what we see here that's changed. So my new point D for my new image is at negative two, five. My new E is at three, negative five. And my new F is at six, seven. So now let's kind of compare these to the original and the originals are over here. So D was originally at five, two. Now it's at negative two, five. So we rotated 90 degrees, which means we're not all the way around to the other side. So we just rotated 90 degrees. And you can see here that my five went from the X to the Y position. My two went from the Y to the X, but it also changed to the opposite, to a negative two. So let's see about the E. The E again, same thing. My X became my Y and my negative three became the X value, but it's the opposite, it's a positive three. My F started at seven, negative six. Again, my X seven turned into my Y, and my negative six Y became my X with the opposite value. So this is just something to notice. We will go over the actual rules of these in a later video, but I wanted you to see what is changing and if we can find those connections. So did the size of the triangle change? And again, in this case, the size did not change. The triangle or the shape just moved to a new position on the graph as it rotated around the origin. And the rotation just depends on the distance that they tell you and the direction. So we can either go 90 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise, or we can go 180 degrees to the opposite side of the graph. Thanks for joining me today for Properties of Rotations in 8th Grade Math. There are several videos that go along with all the transformations. You can find those linked below. I'm Mrs. D. Math. Have a great day. Bye.